Dr. Mordechai Kadar, you're an Arabist in the Israeli academic system. Uh, what do you understand about the uh, Arab cultural view of Jews that Jews ought to understand, Jew, uh, Christians as well, ought to understand, which underlies the relations between Muslims and Jews and Christians in the Middle East and where Muslims are in the West? Well, uh, this uh, view to the Jews and Christians is deeply engraved in the heritage of Islam since the beginning, since even the days of Muhammad, who had his problems with the Jews who didn't want to believe in him, didn't want to convert to Islam, and didn't want to see him as a prophet, rejected him. So after a long time of uh, trying to convert them to Islam, he slaughtered them, uh, took their girls. He even met, met um, uh, married. Uh, one Jewish girl, and uh, since then, since the year of uh, 624 CE, there are no Jews in the Arab Peninsula except for Yemen. So uh, this is uh, the what underlies the Islamic view uh, to to Judaism. Uh, Jews who were found in wherever the Muslims came and occupied in the seventh and eighth century and ninth century. Uh, Jews were tolerated because they don't have idols and they, they, don't, uh, uh, they don't have pigs. So uh, Jews were tolerated. Christians in most cases were also uh, tolerated by, by Islam. As long as they lived under the Sharia law, uh, especially the Dhimmi uh, system. And the Dhimmi system actually says that the Jew and the Christian, first of all, should pay the jizya as it's said in the Quran, from their hands when they are humiliated. There were tax collectors who were kicking the Jew, who was calling on the ground in order to bring the jizya, the, the skull tax. Um, a Jewish home cannot be taller than the Muslim home. A Jewish synagogue cannot be taller than the, than the mosque. Uh, a Jew who walks on the sidewalk should, uh, if, if a Muslim comes in front of him, he, and there is no, not, not enough space for two to be on the sidewalk, the Jew should go down to the sewage and walk in the sewage and not the Muslim. Okay, to make, to make way to, uh, for, for the, for the uh, uh, Muslim. So th this is more or less the laws of humiliation which Jews were uh, forced to live under in order to punish them for the fact that they didn't believe in Muhammad. This, uh, in, in, in a nutshell, is the core of the behavior or the attitude of Islam to, to Jews. Later, when they needed the Jews as translators mainly, or merchants who, know, who knew many languages, uh, Jews uh, succeeded to be, I would say, more uh, upscale on the, on the uh, ladder. And then, to a degree that many Jews were actually uh, doctors who took care of the sultans and the, and the kings. We know about the Rambam, Maimonides, who was a doctor in the 13th century of the, of the uh, ruler, the Fatimid ruler of uh, uh, Egypt, uh, uh, Rabbi Yudha Alevi, um, and, and other uh, Rabbanim which, uh, who we remember from Spain, and not only Spain, were actually doctors in the court of the uh, Muslim uh, ruler, mainly oh, because of two reasons. Uh, first of all, because they were apparently good doctors. Secondly, because the rulers did not suspect them that they want to poison mm -hmm. the ruler, because those days the doctor, the, 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 the uh, med medical doctor, actually was preparing the medications as well by himself. And it, the easiest thing was to prepare something which will kill the, the, the king or the monarch or the, or the caliph. So they used Jews because Jews were not suspected because Jews never had any aspiration to take power. So uh, uh, this is why Jews were until this very day. And as you might know, uh, the, there was an Israeli doctor, urologist, who actually was going to Saudi Arabia to take care of these problems of the uh, of the fa ruling family in Saudi Arabia, and uh, this also was published at some point in the Israeli media. So, 
Um, Jews, as long as, as, as they live uh, according to the rules of Islam, they, they are tolerated. The problem today, the Jews became part of the Zionist uh, organization. The, the Jews actually went to Eretz Israel, and according to our neighbors, Jew, we Jews occupied this uh, country, although we didn't occupy anything. And uh, uh, everything else today is d derived from the, the attitude to Israel, which is rather negative in the Arab world, to an attitude against the Jews, which, is, which they meet wherever they go in the world. So when uh, there's a tremendous uh, hatred for Israel, is it because of something Israel does? Or is it, does it emanate from this uh, religious... Um, look, first of all, it is firstly, because of what Israel is, a state with power, with army, with police, which belongs to Jews, who should, according to Islam, live under the yoke of Islam and in the conditions which the Muslims impose on them. So th definitely, Israel as a fighting force has no right to exist. And all the laws which Jews uh, made since uh, they stole part of the Palestine in 1948, as they say, um, are, are invalid because how can they be valid if the basis doesn't exist because Jews should not live here at all. So definitely the attitude to Jews uh, is bad in many, in many cases, in many places, and in many, many times since uh, uh, Islam came to the world in the seventh century. Uh, and and, and we, we see it and we don't like it because we know that hatred uh, leads to wars and in wars, you know, kids are being killed. So uh, this is why we see this, uh, uh, this situation, but we don't say much because if we say it, will be, they will say that this is Zionist education. So we try to hold ourselves to the facts and uh, if needed, we do what uh, we have to do. On the subject of war, Iran is now uh, moving arms into position uh, in Syria. They have arms in position in Lebanon. What, uh, what steps should the West be taking now with respect to uh, a preparation for defense against an Iranian uh, initiative, aggression against the Jewish state? First of all, the world should not stand still in front of the fact that Iran actually moves its troops, its troops to Syria. Syria today became a, a battlefield of the Iranians, and the Iranians are bringing uh, uh, army units, they bring air force, they have already six um, airports, military airports, which today are operated by the Iranians. They can bring to Syria whatever weapon they like, missiles, long-range missiles, whatever, things which can uh, arrive Europe as well, not only, or not only Israel. Um, I believe that uh, they have all kinds of weapons of mass destruction, whether it's chemical weapons or biological weapons already in Syria. I don't have any information about this, but this is what I believe. And for them, they came to Syria in order to stay in Syria. Israel should uh, ring the bell, should shake the world, in order not to, the, to perpetuate the Iranian presence uh, in Syria, uh, depends again on the price. If, if you are willing to start a, a war against the Iranians, it's one situation, and if you don't, uh, it's a different situation. So uh, Israel should decide what to do before it becomes something which cannot be, uh, cannot, nothing cannot, cannot be done against it. Uh. If the U.S. was prepared to stand against North Korea on behalf of the American ally South Korea, ought America also stand militarily in the defense of ally Israel against the Iranian attack? Well, this question should be directed to the Trump administration. Uh, I, I, have, I have no idea what the Americans are really planning in Syria. I heard that Trump says that he wants to take the American troops out of Syria. And the question is only when. And uh, I, I really don't know because things are on the make. And uh, the way the United States uh, conduct this conflict in Syria uh, gives the impression that they don't really prepare to something which will be more than a month in ahead. More, more, more than a month ahead. 
because the American uh, un unwillingness to go to fight in Syria, whether it is against Daesh or against the Syrian regime or even, uh, of course, against the Russians. Nobody here wants to get in trouble with these people. Uh, yet, uh, you can definitely see what happens if you neglect the problem. So it's some kind of trade-off what you do and when you do it, because on one side you cannot devastate the country, uh, but on the other side uh, you have to uh, take care of the of the president, who killed so far uh, more than half a million people. And I really don't understand how come this man Bashar al-Assad still uh, has uh, diplomatic immunity; he can go wherever he wants in the world. Nobody can do anything against him. This is something which I don't understand. But is Iran, in fact, a threat to the entire world, the free world, beyond just the Israeli border? I have no doubt. First of all, that's what they say, because uh, they definitely de de declare those ayatollahs that they are the heirs of Muhammad. And they are actually uh, ruling the, is the Islamic world, means the Shia world, in their view, um, uh, according to the teachings of Muhammad. means they try to emulate the behavior of Muhammad in order to create some kind of uh, uh, justification to what they, to what they uh, do. However, we should always bear in mind that the Iranians are on their way unleashed to take the whole world over. They say it, they act according to this, and I have the doc documents at home which were published by Hezbollah, which say the same thing. You take them seriously, as should you think the rest of the world? Uh, not at all. Uh, Bashar al-Assad and uh, his allies, the Iranians, of course the Russians as well, but the Russians are too dangerous to mess with. But definitely Assad and Iran and Hezbollah, of course, should be, uh, should be kicked out from whatever they have today in Syria, especially the Assad regime, because uh, he lost his legitimacy because of the number of of workers who were uh, shot dead by his own uh, people for the last seven years. What about the uh, Muslim residents of Israel? If there's a war, it's been reported that there are Muslim Brotherhood cells who will work in concert, in conjunction with the, the war, uh, the invaders coming from Lebanon. What do you think about that? Well, for this we have the Shabak, the general uh, security organization and uh, they should know what to do with uh, such people who fall in love with Hezbollah. Uh, what about the uh, the fallout against Israel in case uh, Israel has to act preemptively or defensively that it, it turns into uh, a, a war there? Well the war doesn't uh, like preemptive strikes uh, only in, in very special cases, very limited cases and after you consulted with the half of the world, you can you can do it. This is not the way how to do it because preemptive usually you you decided decide upon it uh, like uh, one hour before you do it. So no, now you cannot start to, con to consult uh, other countries in the world. So uh, this is more or less the, the the question. They want to see Israel and the means the Arab and Israel, many of them, uh, identify with this call to change Israel from the Zionist Jewish. A state to the state of all its uh, uh, citizens, and uh, and uh, yes, they want to erase the Jewish nature of the of, of the state of the state of Israel, and uh, we Israelis should uh, you know not fall asleep on guard, and uh, to make sure that uh, our enemies uh, know exactly what will happen to them once they start to uh, deal with us. The Saudi prince Salman came to Washington to request a big arms package, $3 billion worth of arms, ostensibly to fight against Iran, and that he, he was uh, not uh, a, a, a in favor of a Palestinian state. And then he left, and his, his uh, father, the king of Saudi Arabia, phoned the White House and took back and stepped back and says that they're, they're very supportive of the Palestinians. Will those arms that, uh, that America could approve to Saudi Arabia ever possibly be used against the Jewish state? Well, uh, we should uh, always look at the Saudis from uh, uh, several points of view. First of all, we should always remember 
that they never joined any peace agreement between us and the Arab world. They heard about the peace with Egypt and they didn't join it in 1979. They heard about the peace with, with Jordan and they did not join this peace in 1994. They didn't even join the peace with the Palestinians as people thought uh, that Oslo agreements will be uh, in uh, 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 more or less uh, uh, in, in, 2000, in, in 1993 when Israel signed the, the Oslo agreements. So the Saudis were not um, enthusiastic to embrace us and to view us as part of the Middle East. What makes them now uh, with Israel is the fear from Iran. Apparently their fear from Iran is bigger than their hatred to Israel. So Israel is not today a problem anymore. Israel is the solution. Whether Israel can do or cannot do, or can deliver or not deliver, in this thing, I have no idea. Mm -hmm. But would you trust them to not uh, reverse their position the way the Saudi king just demonstrated? Uh, it will take a long time and much of an effort to change society, to change the culture, to change the mindset, to change the way people belo behave and speak and everything. Uh, what? Saudi, Saudi Arabia needs in order to become a modern state, you, you have to start uh, this uh, uh, teaching or education uh, in, in, the, in the kindergarten already. The, the, the kindergarten uh, lady uh, should teach the, girl, the, the boys and the girls in her, in her, in her, in her uh, 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 kindergarten uh, these things, or how to become a, a, a man who works um, in whatever he can work, in order to bring money home and to sustain his wife and children. So far, they bring money from, uh, um, from oil. They don't work on it. There are other workers. They don't do that. The only uh, effort for them is to walk to the bank and to sign here, 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 here and here. So, uh, unfortunately, uh, also for the Gulf, I don't see the Gulf Emirates uh, uh, survive until the end of time if they don't uh, uh, change their reality to the Middle Eastern one. What's your attitude towards Muslim immigrants into the West, Western Europe, Eastern Europe, for instance, and the Americas? Well, as much as I hear, they, they have problems of being absorbed by the societies they usually don't want. There is a problem of, of violence as are in Sweden uh, and the Swedish uh, uh, police uh, is too reluctant to to publicize these uh, uh, these reve events, although uh, Muslims are uh, pose much of a problem to uh, those societies. In Britain, there are problems in enforcing law on Muslims, and uh, yes, uh, the world has to decide whether we are against Islam or we are in favor. Because if you don't do anything against, you are actually in favor. But towards the interest of diversity, that all faiths are welcome in the West, uh, Christianity and uh, Buddhism, shouldn't Islam also be welcomed into the West, even if it's brought in from uh, Middle Eastern uh, immigrants? Look, as long as Islam uh, accept the West, accept the values of the, the, facts, the, of the West, accept the freedoms which people in the West enjoy from, especially girls and women, and freedom means to wear what they want or not, uh, to behave in many cases as they want. Uh, unless Islam allows the girls and the boys to behave as Europeans if they come to Europe, it will remain to be a dictatorial system. But if you say that the, uh, the Saudis can't change their culture overnight, it has to be done from the kindergarten, aren't you importing uh, Jew haters, people who've been inculcated with anti-Semitism from their home countries? Uh, well, definitely, there is, a, there is a problem because Muslims in many cases do not want to assimilate uh, and to become part of the society. They want to live near the society. We see it very well in no-go zones in France, in Germany. Uh, we see it on uh, other criteria which actually um, um, uh, are meant to keep them with their old uh, homeland uh, uh, culture. And I'm not sure that the European multiculturalism can contain a, a, a culture which doesn't behave at all according to the European mindset. 